Hi, Patrice, and welcome everyone to today's podcast. We're at episode 32. Wow. Hi, Shonda. 32. Wow, that's a lot. That's great. Yeah. So you found this article that you thought was very interesting, and I find it interesting too. So go ahead and uh, introduce that for us. Yes. I was just looking at my local neighborhood paper, and it's an article under, it's called The Experts. It happens to be from Dr. Rosen Mm -hmm. and Dr. Oz, and it's entitled Cooking at Home Can Upgrade Your Health. I thought, wow, what a, what a catchy title. And I just wanted to read more about what they were talking about. So that's the title of this article, Cooking at Home Can Upgrade Your Health. Wow. Yeah, that's yeah. good. I, I'm sure that catches a lot of people's attention too, right? Exactly. And especially the question that prompted this title and the question that they answered from someone who wrote in the question is, I'm sick of cooking all the time, exclamation point. Why shouldn't I go back to eating out and ordering in more often? And you know what my response to that was? It was, it was a little bit of a joke, but it was like, I'm sick of cooking. It's like, okay, sick of cooking or be sick, you know, diminish Ooh. your health by eating out all the time. So uh, that was why I was like, choose to be sick of cooking and then it'll just get better (laughs) instead of you know allowing the other to happen yeah i like your response i i don't know if it's the typical response and uh they they approached this question in a diplomatic a a kind of humorous and then just very truthful way well maybe you can do this but one thing you might want to keep in mind is that uh Americans, at least four to five of our weekly meals are already from drive throughs diners and pizza joints and chain restaurants. So we're already eating out at an average of $15 a meal. And that is a cost of four times more than making your own healthy home cooked meal. So the first response has to do with your pocketbook. Right. yeah. yeah, I know. That's why we we put a limit on going out to eat. And it used to be once a month. And now we don't even do that. So, wow, you guys are really good. But yeah, I think people forget that it adds up. Mm-hmm. And so they broke it down for you how much money you're spending. And then again, if you're cooking at home, not only is it healthy, but you're really going to save and that's really going to impact your budget mm-hmm. in a good way. Yeah, yeah I think so. I think so. I'm all about budgeting. Exactly. Exactly. And if the budget's not as much of a concern for you and your family, they went on to continue with saying there was a 15 year study that found people who regularly ate two or more commercially prepared meals a day were 67% more likely to die from cancer and 18% more likely to die from cardiovascular disease than people who rarely eat out or eat prepared meals. Wow, that's a big number. Very, very, 67%. uh, And wow, I I was just blown away by that. Um, And I think people don't really think about it in that way because it may not be instantaneous you know, the first year or two, you might be eating out constantly and you're not suffering from cancer or cancer-like diseases, but it's a, a progression. But what were you saying? Yeah, I was just going to say, remember how last night when we were listening, I don't know, were you there on Dr. Baxter? I was listening in and he was talking about this patient of his said, I've been eating this way for so long. And then all of a sudden, snap. Yeah. And that's what happens. All of a sudden, it's like snap, you yeah. know? And the health, it just, it just goes unless you know how to turn it around and healthy Mm -hmm. eating, better eating more, you know, um, targeted eating can turn it around quickly too. So yeah, let's get back to making those home cooked meals and, and preparing food at home, you know, not necessarily 
cooked. It could be salads, you know, and things like that. So, um, yeah, what else, what else did it talk about? Because I have pieces, I have bits and pieces of it here in front of me. And I okay. thought it had given um, statistics on how often people eat out, but I actually don't see that now when I look here, because I was amazed. Maybe there was some- Oh, no, we spoke about that, that typically people are eating four to five of their weekly meals out. Yeah, that was it. And that was like, wow, that was like amazing to me. I just, I couldn't believe that. Yeah, that was before the money hit. <laughs> yeah. Now, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Four to five weekly meals. All right. Yeah. It takes time. Like we've been talking about, it takes time. It takes, it takes preparation because time can be spent. You know, if you have small kids, you can bring them in, they can help with cooking and that's time spent together. So it can be a pleasant time. You know, I'm all about cooking at home. Well, I know. I know you're like four to five times a week because your family has developed a habit of only going once a month, if not even that now. So it's a habit to yeah. not go out. You know, the reason for going out was so we could come together and sit down and eat together because that's not a normal thing that happened here. Everyone was always so busy. So that was to go sit together and not be distracted and be able to talk. But then as you know, now they're pretty much grown adults. So we mm -hmm. just don't do that anymore. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, I, I, I was just like yourself blown away by some of this information. And then on the upside, they want to say that, you know, as a result of the pandemic, there have been a lot of families that are cooking more at home and eating meals that are prepared at home versus just always, always eating out. Yeah. So yeah. that was um, an upside to the pandemic. And one report found that 11% of people are eating breakfast at home every day or more frequently because a lot of people skip breakfast, but due to the pandemic, people have slowed down and are now incorporating a new habit of eating, starting the day with some good fuel. If you're preparing it at home, it's hopefully better food that's being prepared than what you buy on the go or just a coffee mm -hmm. cup, a cup mm -hmm. of coffee. So the, the, there's some bright sides to the pandemic and then also some benefits to um, uh, learning to uh, learning a new habit of eating at home or preparing more meals at home. So that was good. So they give us some suggestions on how to cook at home and how to continue to cook at home, right? They sure did. Um, one was to cook once and eat three times. And I think this is something you've done over the years. And I, is it called batch cooking? Uh, I suppose so. I do more like I'll just cook a big pot of grains so that I can have them over and over, you know, maybe even two different grains, you know, and have them over and over again. Or, you know, because I, I like to, I see that it talks about soups. Yeah. I'm going to pick on the soups, the stews, and even uh, pasta sauces and things like that, because like in a soup, you know, it's just like take all your ingredients and throw it into the Instant Pot for me, you mm. know, and then you come out with a soup or stew. But then I, I really focus on bowls now where I just I just create a few different uh, what many people will call side dishes, but put them all together in a with a bowl and a salad dressing a great idea and a good reminder that people can go to the real food and drinks website and find the video or on youtube wherever you want uh to find that what is the title of it well the last one was um vegetable bowls i think okay. i'll definitely put a link there is that the one you were thinking of i think that one i think you had two but uh whatever videos you had about the bowls were excellent. I love how like you can have your 
chickpeas and then you have your vegetables and then you have your grains and and maybe another vegetable and you have enough prepared so that throughout the week you can mix it up and put together different combinations of these grains and vegetables to make up bowls or I love to add in my green salads the grains or beans I even have done that mm -hmm. so, yeah, make a full uh, meal out of a salad Yes, not just a side salad, but the salad is the main mm -hmm. meal. Yeah, yeah, those yeah. are really easy. Yeah. Okay. Did you mention casseroles? I don't make many casseroles, but. Okay. Well, that's something I'm experimenting with. And, and I just made a huge or a pretty big uh, cauliflower one. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed because my husband, he eats meat and I don't. And so I made this tray of it but half of it had the ground lamb on the bottom, the other half did not. And it was just cauliflower with uh, green peppers, yellow peppers, red peppers, onions, some herbs, spices, and then a can of diced tomatoes, or you can just use your, cut up your own tomatoes, all that sauteed together and you put it in the oven uh, for about 20 some minutes. And um, you can opt to put some vegan cheese or, or put something on top, some parsley, but it was yummy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just all about being creative. You know, um, I heard just yesterday about eating pasta. Now we do want to eat whole grain pasta. It's really not uh, that different. It's just nuttier, tastier, you know, it has some more bite to it, but it's really good. So start slow. You can start um, half and half, half whole wheat and half of, you know, good what idea. you used to do and just kind of gradually build up. But in that pasta sauce, you know, you can buy a store-bought pasta sauce, but add some zucchini, some extra onions and bell peppers and you know, different vegetables or greens or spinach to that pasta sauce and make a really nice meal. Delicious. I'm hungry now. <laughs> Sounds delicious. Yeah. And one other example, they, well, another thing they suggested is make it fun by learning about new recipes because there's so many videos now available. So even with your family members, you can say, hey, let's watch this video, this new recipe, uh, and then cook it together. Mm -hmm. yeah, cook okay, it together. yeah, sounds good. So I know we've given our own tips so far, but what about just a, a, a final tip or a word of encouragement to everyone listening? Yes, I, I, we need to all be encouraged that we can start small by just doing something differently. Maybe if we're eating out several times a week, decide, okay, this is the one day a week we're going to eat out and, and make it a challenge. Let's see, can I be creative or how can I intentionally prepare to make my meals for the rest of the days of the week? and then look forward to that one day of the week that, we, that I will eat out. Right, yeah. And then that day that you do decide to cook something, make mm -hmm. something that uh, for more than one day, you know? So, mm -hmm. you know, you may not have it the very next day, but maybe you can have it the day after that, you know? And you know what is always good? I think sometimes, you know, I like to warm my food up in the toaster oven not in a microwave. There is just a whole different taste or experience from having warmed food in, in, a, in a warm oven. Uh, it's just very different than microwave. So if you've been microwaving over and over, give it that little extra time and put that in a dish in an oven or a little toaster oven and warm it up and, and try it that way. Try your leftovers in a different way and add a new little sauce or a new side to it. That's a great idea to add spices to your already prepared leftovers. And I love how you brought up that you don't always have to go to the microwave because I don't like the microwave either because to me it it messes with the texture of my food yeah and it takes away from how delightful it is mm -hmm. so I'm like you I not only will use my big old oven but I'll also use the stove top mm -hmm. whenever I can and warm it up but you're yeah. right even my children who are young adults I have noticed sometimes they're like oh yeah can you warm up on the stove for me because they don't want to use the microwave yeah, great thing. There is a difference. So hopefully someone will hear this and say, yeah, maybe that's why I don't like leftovers, you know? That's true. Warm that might up. be why they don't. 
Good point. So, yeah, thanks for finding this article. It's really good. I'll, I'll link, you know, the more notes below and um, happy cooking at home, everyone. Yes, enjoy cooking at home and, and invite your family to join you or friends even. Yeah. Okay, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. We hope you enjoyed watching today's video of our podcast. A link to the show notes can be found below this video. Also, please subscribe so you won't miss any future videos. And be sure to comment below and let us know what you think about this format. Until next time, let's just be real. <laughs>